So uh, thanks for, for being here, thanks for having me. My name is Jens Christian, I'm the, the product owner of uh, the Switch Infrastructure as a Service Cloud product called Switch Engines. And um, in the way of what we heard this morning, um, let's get rid of PaaS, let's get rid of uh, uh, robotics. I'll say let's get rid of the cloud. Why do we even have a cloud? Drop the cloud and do something else. Uh, um, the, the history of, of the journey that we've been working on, we've, uh, at Switch I've been working at uh, cloud services for a bit over three years now. We've been in production uh, for over one and a half years with the cloud infrastructure service. And this is the tale of, uh, of what we've been doing and what, where we think the future is in cloud. And in a very specific way, because we are a if you will, we are a public cloud vendor uh, at Switch, although the public consists of the uh, academia mostly. Uh, we still have to compete against in, in a marketplace, and, and uh, how do we do that? It's going to be the topic of the talk uh, today. Uh, this is also not finished conclusions. Um, we are working on this. We have uh, a lot of interesting ideas. If they will have worked, uh, I will be able to tell you. How all these things panned out. But this is a work in progress, and as such, as a case study in uh, progress. Now, cloud, of course, is is a, a very undefined thing. Uh, let me give you words about our cloud. We're, we have built an, an infrastructure as a service cloud about 120 servers, uh, we have uh, one and a half thousand compute, we are uh, distributed geographically in Zurich and in Lausanne, we are building on open source software, it's on OpenStack, we have, uh, we're using an open storage system called Ceph, and we have around um, five, six, seven hundred users on the cloud at any given time, and running between anywhere between seven hundred and a thousand virtual machines at the moment. That's going to be uh, talking about. Now, when you go out and, and build a cloud, it, with the, the field of dreams, uh, you build it and you hope that they will come. I don't know if you know the movie. Uh, this guy here, he, uh, he built a, a, like a baseball field out in the middle of nowhere and hoped that, that the players came. They came. Now, Does this work for cloud? Yeah, the question. I think. And um, if you look at, at if you, if you, who out here has built a cloud? Who is building public clouds? One, it might not be the talk for you that you were looking for in that case. Um, if you build a cloud, um, you invest a lot of time in, in time and money, and you have you end up with a wonderful product. It's shiny. You're proud of all the servers blinking in your rack. Uh, it has four wheels. It, it's got colors and, and looks really nice. It runs. You spend man years of, of development time getting everything up and running because cloud is an open source cloud product, install it, that's one part, but then to make it run, you need a lot more, a lot more time, a lot more effort. I guess uh, Antoine can attest to that. It's, it's just, right. But if you take a step back, look at your cloud, you will see that, fuck no, <laughs> it's nothing, right? You've seen the pictures of Google data centers? Okay, your cloud is nothing. It fits in the in the basin comma in the closet somewhere of a, of a Google or an Amazon or a Facebook data center. It's nothing. It's not a cloud. It's it's uh, just something else. <laughs> it might still be called cloud in your you know you call it cloud, but in reality it's a bunch of servers and. Um, the question is, how can a local infrastructure provider prevail in a marketplace with big cloud providers? They have some serious power. 
Amazons, the Googles, the Microsofts, they offer a lot of things that you just, or we, cannot offer. Okay, I'm not talking to you, uh, but as, as us, as a cloud provider. It's, it's uh, a different league, different scale. So, in order to not end up like that, uh, as uh, would be the danger if, if one of the big cloud players come rushing your way, the question is, how do you compete have to, to compete with them. Otherwise, why are you doing it? You want to sell your services, you want to sell your infrastructure, you want to have people computing and <coughs> stuff in your cloud. How do you, how do you compete? Do you compete on scale? Probably not. Do you compete on price? Without scale, it's difficult to compete on price. Do you compete on the amount of, of technical services that you offer? Anybody taking a look recently at Amazon uh, service offering? It's like um, they've got a couple of thousand engineers working on it. Oh, you're not going to compete on that either. Uh, it's so. What are you going to compete on? Where is your unique selling proposition? Where is your Where is your tag into this market? Uh, because, as Antoine said. Before it, it's commodity, right? What, what we are offering as a cloud provider is total commodity. Mm -hmm. People can take, pick up their VMs and take them somewhere else if they even have been to you. So the question is, I think what where you can, <coughs> where you can start, and, and maybe this is the, the uh, perspective of our unique perspective at, uh, as, uh, at Switch. I'll come to that in a moment. Uh, is to ask, what do your users want? What do you know what your users want? Are you in a market where you understand what your users want? And if you do, if you are, do you understand what they want? One of the things um, which is doing is we're in a, in a very specialized market. We're in the market, actually we're, we're not in a market even, we're in a protected <laughs> ecosystem. Uh, Switch is a foundation, a non-for-profit non foundation funded by the Swiss community and the Swiss government. We've been doing a lot of basic infrastructure work for over 25 years. Um, most of you probably know Switch through the domains that you have had with them and that you have had to transfer to somebody else. We've been, uh, We've been providing infrastructure to universities. We have cabled the country. There are a uh, half thousand kilometers of fiber that we own provide internet to the people, we run a 100 gigabit backbone, uh, we do a lot of things in identity management, and anybody that has been to a Swiss university has an AAI account, single sign-on federated account, and identity, we want to take it one step further and have a lifelong identity, learning identity, something we're out right now. We have security teams uh, that work on keeping the infrastructure secure, <coughs> because uh, you can imagine that a campus network uh, where 10,000 students plug in their laptops can be an interesting case for security. Uh, we have uh, things from, we, we offer procurement services, uh, we offer video conferencing, lecture recording, God knows what. And our customers are, first of all, IT services at the universities, uh, researchers, lecturers, and this is our market, if you will. And sometimes this market comes to us and says, we want services. One such case is uh, the ubiquitous sync and share service. I don't know. Universities came to us and said, hey, um, we don't like people using Dropbox. Go out, build something for us that is uh, located in Switzerland that is cheaper and faster and more secure. And God knows what. So we went out and did, then the same people came back and laughed at us. Why are you competing against services of Dropbox? Which was interesting. You know, first they laugh at you, then, then you win. Uh, at the moment, we have about 90% uh, of the higher education signed up for this service. We are running a very successful sync and share service based on open source software. And uh, you got what they asked for. Okay. Took a while, but we can deliver what I'm 
people are asking for. But, and this is where, my, where I would argue is, there is an, even a third way to get, get to um, markets. And this is uh, the only scientific slide that I have. Edbeck. Uh, based on the IKEA effect, when labor leads to love, and you can look up the paper there. Who has uh, built an IKEA furniture? <laughs> right, all right. So you know the process. You go into the uh, IKEA, you pick up the, the big cardboard box, you uh, come home, open it, scratch your head when you see the, uh, the instructions. You sweat, you struggle, you stumble, you fumble. In the end, you have your billy shelf or your sofa, or your knut, or your holgar, or whatever, your large hadron collider, and you love it. <laughs> you love it because you spent labor on it, worked on it, and, and this is a scientifically proven effect. If you, if you work on something, you have a very different um, relationship to the product, and you love it. That's probably the success of IKEA. So, um, how do we make the IKEA effect work for us? And with that, I'd, I'd like to switch microphones, hand over my colleague Patrick, who is uh, the master of the nibbles, or what do you call it? Thank you. Uh, 11.15, have to end, okay, so we'll catch up for what was the uh, catch up something of the coffee break then. How do we do that? Customers, they're building with us services on our cloud infrastructure. Search and um, well, <coughs> we ask them, well, what do you need? Um, how do you how do you how do you use our infrastructure? We work. We work together with them, um, well, to to get their learning experiences, to share those experiences with others and tell the others how they can make use of our infrastructure. Same for, not for research, for teaching. Uh, imagine you have, um, you have that room here full of students. Everyone has to get, uh, has his laptop, has to get run something uh, on a virtual machine. Uh, then you spend two or three hours to have the last one in the room. Um, the virtual machine running because all the environments are, are slightly different and actually you don't want to get the, the virtual machine running in your computers to, to teach people. You actually want to teach people something in that machine in, with their experiment. So the easier thing is uh, just to get them a homogeneous environment and uh, this environment is in the cloud. Everyone has a cell account there and can do uh, what he needs to do just uh, without installing anything. Well, sounds very basic, probably, but um, it has to be made too. So, kind of the step from legacy infrastructure to virtualization. They, they'll also share. Um, those <clears throat> those experiences in practice. Something we learned um, soon after um, about infrastructure was people um, they do not only want infrastructure they they want to analyze data. So they asked us, well, how do I install Hadoop uh, with uh, with a cluster on your on your, on your infrastructure? Uh, they started doing that, but it would be much nicer if that would be um, available to, to anyone as a service. So, we're working together with 
the um, <coughs> University of St. Gallen, uh, Zeit Talwe here, uh, to make that happen. Common infrastructure with a tool, part, things like that. And uh, yeah. also provide the, the own, the own experiment with for different scenarios, for research, for teaching also. Well, just being able to analyze, that's, uh, that's like a football team without the football. Um, data to analyze. So, where do you store the data? There are massive data sets out there. Um, they reach hundreds of terabytes, and, and of course, if you have to store that for your own, it gets very expensive. So we're trying to find out uh, which are the data sets that are, that are interesting for our community and, um, and share, share and store that for them. So, we have some infrastructure um, with a few hundred terabytes of storage capacity, so we put it down there, people can work on that. Statistics, well, that's something used in almost every discipline, from psychology, psychology to, um, well, physics. everyone does statistics. Not only use um, open source software like R, they also software like SPSS and we're looking into how to get that software on our infrastructure as a ready-made product, as an environment that you can start. It should be just fast and easy. For me. Private cloud, that we are in some sense, as Jens Christian said it, we are a public cloud provider. But um, we have institutions with their own networks, with their own infrastructure, and we want to enable them to, to grow that infrastructure into our environment that we <coughs> provide them, while still profit from their own firewalls and then their, their DM set into our cloud. So they can, they can uh, make their infrastructure more efficient, they can The next pass, <laughs> we skipped the pass part, <laughs> so <laughs> we only did infrastructure as a service, service, uh, software service, um, but we are looking into how how to deliver containers and also how to to uh, manage virtual machines. So that's uh, probably the, the the next important step after virtualization. How how do you uh, applications within containers? People want that. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, out of Indian projects like the Blue Blue Brain project. Um, <coughs> will deliver that as a service. Of course, researchers they work together. They work together internationally, and there the problem is well, how do I my environment, my tools to other out there internationally. Um, <clears throat> they want to have uh, some, some simple tools, self-service tools, and some uh, collaborative editing tools, other, other uh, nice tools like uh, Python notebooks, a self-service application with, um, with one uh, single sign-on. So easy authentication. So we, we talk to professors um, that, uh, that play that through with their, their students, researchers, and help them also improve the service we provide. Charging billing. Yes, that's, uh, that's the reality. So well in the afternoon, what? And of course, one of the issues is, where do I find the application I'm looking for? Find the service. That's what we do with a, a place uh, where people can, 
can find services and also institutions can offer services to each other. <coughs> As always, um, questions of um, procurement and, and legal support that, that we need. We have that experience um, and knowledge in-house. All of that is done within the so Caleb project. We do create academic services for our institutions. It's um, kind of a market, so to say, so our aim is not to, to compete with, uh, with Swisscom or, or Exos. Our aim is to, to serve like Zetali. So we started, we are more or less of the project, um, maybe in a year, about the outcome. We work together, we are our eight project partners. Sense that uh, half of the, the funding has to come from the institution too. So that, that makes sure that there's some motivation on the institution side to work on that because uh, you only do it for the money. Uh, that's not, that's not the good motivation. You should do it because you want something and that together Have here like the switch engines, the infrastructure, we have the switch drive service, and we say we scale up. We have all those services on the same infrastructure. These are all the partners we're working with. Um, that's that's the approach we're taking. We're doing that together to learn from our partners what they actually need. Um, we're not in close contact with researchers as such at Switch. Um, working together with our customers, that uh, enables us to get in touch with researchers, to know what they really want and to offer specific service. factors of success that um, led us to success for the past uh, projects we did, so like Drive and, and the switch infrastructure service. Um, we involved the community, we involved our customers, that's the same to us, they are partners. Well, of course, we have skilled staff like Jens Christian and his team, all experts in their field. Uh, not only on, on technical parts, also on other parts, in the yellow part, I guess. <laughs> so, and, and of course, um, it helps when you get some money for that too, uh, but that's, that's not the only Of course, you have to have the right partners, <coughs> and um, you have to find the right balance between uh, research, education, and um, and also providing services. And what we really want to do is focus on services and uh, so research projects. And what that is uh, yes, in the end. It all comes down to, to build something that uh, is sustainable, um, well-architected, realistic, I think, unlike this uh, play table here. Um, what you, what the, one of the reasons of success is, is that all these projects are interacting with each other and supporting each other. So there's a the, the sum of it all is larger than the individual projects. Big data and data pools support each other. Containers, virtual machine management support each other, and so on and so on. But that is um, something we, we think will be successful. And I'll, I'll be here in one, two, three years' time and tell you if we succeeded or not. Um, that being said, there's one announcement I want to make.
we are looking for an intern in our team. So if you know, if you are looking for a job for six to 12 months and learning how to operate a cloud and build it and do it, talk to me and we'll find a nice space in our office and the third credit card <laughs> for us. If you know somebody that is looking for something, somebody that has that area, send them our way. And with that, I think we have uh, exceeded the time for questions and can go on to the next whatever. Thank you very much. No, uh, I think maybe there are some questions or so remarks and we take the time for this. No, upstream. upstream. Yeah, yeah, we do it all our own. We, we're uh, right now upgrading to Liberty as we speak. Uh, and how do you deploy it? Like, have you some custom, uh, like, Ansible playbook? We have, uh, we're using a mixture of uh, OpenStack Puppet modules. We have written our own Puppet modules. We have written Ansible scripts to control the Puppet update. It, um, this is where my team is spending most of its time on, is getting the orchestration infrastructure running. And, and what about uh, updates? Like, can you in-place OpenStack updates? Or? Yes, of course we do in-place. Of course we do in-place OpenStack. Okay. Not like the others that deploy new infrastructures and then move to customer We have done three <coughs> OpenStack updates in our infrastructure without any downtime. To Took us a couple of years, man years, to get that, but we did it. Yeah.